Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be a mod review type video. We're going to take a look at how to use the Farm Production Pack by Omatana. Um, this is a mod that's 11.92 megabytes to download for all platforms. It made it into my top 10 mods of the week um, a couple weeks ago or last week when it came out. Anyways, it made it into that. Um, it's a really cool pack and I wanted to take a look at it with you guys and kind of show it off. Uh, Omatana does have a great video on it as well, which a card will pop up on your screen right now if you wanted to go uh, check that out. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this and we're going to actually take a look at some of the different production recipes that are in here that are kind of added because it does add some new recipes. Um, it doesn't add any new products to the game, but it adds some new ways to make products that we already have in game, which I like. Um, and it's a really cool pack. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into it and we'll talk about if some of those new recipes are actually worth it towards the end of this video um, in terms of profitability. So this pack has several items. It has four items, in fact. Um, the first two items right here, we have a silo and a buy point right here. So the silo, if we go into the build mode, oop, if I don't move around too much, um, if we go under silos, scroll down to the very end, you're gonna find it right here, farm production mod. A silo holds 10 million liters. It is a multi-fruit silo, so you can put whatever you want into it. Um, which is pretty cool as well. And then this buying station over here is gonna be under containers, I believe. Yep, there we go, farm protection. Now this is an animal food buying station, so you can't buy everything in here, but you can buy anything that you kind of use for animal food. So um, just to kind of show that off, and obviously those guys are not, uh, those are not too expensive either. Again, the silo itself is 30 grand and the container is 10 grand right there to buy by the buy point. So 30 grand and 10 grand, 30 grand for a 10 million liter silo is pretty sweet. Uh, but in terms of what you can get out of this, wheat, barley, Oats, canola, sorghum, sunflowers, soybeans, corn, potatoes, sugar beets, seeds, total mixed ration, silage, grass, solid fertilizer, lime, pig food, straw, mineral feed, hay, manure, and then back to wheat. Now, I haven't tested all the prices on these, um, but I can tell you that they're going to be very similar to in-game. So if we just take a look at wheat. Wheat, if you're in normal economy mode, um, the kind of, in general, average price for it is going to be right around $607 per thousand liters. So if we just go ahead and fill this up, We'll see how much it costs us to fill this thing all the way to the top here. Okay, it costs us $4,000 for 12,100 liters. So how much did we pay per thousand liters? So we paid $336, which is a screaming deal for wheat here, um, which is awesome. So obviously that's a really good deal for wheat. So um, my guess is all the products are gonna be a pretty good deal there. But the two main things I wanna take a look at in this pack are the two production facilities, which are these two guys right here. Now, if we take a look at them in the menu, under production, go to factories, Scroll all the way to end, the end here. We have these two guys right here. We have the farm production, which is going to be able to take all these inputs and it's going to make all these different outputs here, which I'll show you guys here in a second. And then we have the farm supply, which is this building right over here, which is going to make all your feed and farm supplies and stuff like that. Now, these buildings are designed to be able to be placed together if you want to or separate. So if I place um, these guys down and place them together, what I'm going to do is actually open my help menu. Over there, you see toggle snapping. Uh, Omatana recommends in her video, you turn snapping on. So if I go ahead and I snap this guy, let's say I want it right here, and then I can have this guy snap forward just right there. Look at that. They're gonna they're gonna match perfectly together. So they kind of look like they are essentially one building. You can see a little bit of funky business there in the middle, but honestly, you're not gonna notice that. Um, so yeah, really cool. And if we go in here, a lot of cool details in here as well that Omatana added. Uh, I'm gonna try to make sure I actually show them all off. Um, let me actually go, yeah, slow us down here. So up there, upper left-hand corner, you can see mix. And this is for all platforms too. If I left click, it makes it look like you're actually making stuff. And the TMR is mixing. And there is some volume involved. Let me see if I can't, uh, and then it goes away. So that is actually not needed to run the production. That's all decorative in terms of everything there. Uh, let me turn the game volume up because there is some noise associated with it a little bit. Let me make sure my volume is up as well here. Yep, that would be why right there. So if I click it, you have some noises happening right there, which is awesome. Mix again, mix, mix again. You can keep doing your things, which is pretty cool. Um, so anyhow, yeah, very cool um, in terms of that building there. This is the icon you're gonna use to access the production menu itself. And here it'll take you to the production menu. Your inputs are gonna go right here. And this is your output pipe right here. We're gonna get all your stuff out. So this isn't gonna spawn pallets. Now the other facility right over here is a little bit separate. And actually let's go over here and look at the individual ones to make it easier to kind of see. So again, your input here, output here through that pipe. And then here's how you're gonna access it. This is the building we were just in. If we go into this one, we can again, left click in here if we want to, to have that come up, which is a really cool um, animation. <clears throat> then over here at this facility, we can hit R here to go into our production menu. Our pallets will spawn here. And this is where we can dump stuff in. So very cool. If we go into here. I'm gonna open up my help menu so I don't miss anything. 
I can't remember. I think there's just at least one thing. Let's switch hand tool. Prepare dough. We'll come back to that. And yeah, bake over there. So yeah, we can go over here. If I, you can watch it very closely. If I left click to prepare dough, it's going to mix for a little bit. Then it's going to pop out with the dough on that hook and then it'll disappear. But it does pop out, which is pretty cool. And then it pops up, dough goes on. Then you can go over here and you can kind of role play baking. If I left click, the oven will go on. Now you can't do anything with these. You can't, you can move, I think one, it's just this one around. You can move some of the stuff around, but not everything in here. Uh, most of it's just decorative um, to help keep uh, kind of the, just make it easier in, in terms of like game performance and stuff like that. And I can go in here. Oh, it's gonna let me bake again. But anyhow, very cool. I think I might have to do that and then, oh, look at that. Then it lets me bake. <laughs> very cool. So um, yes, this is a really cool mod, really cool mod pack here. So now I wanna talk about what you actually can make in this. So if I come up here to the farm productions here, if I go in here, farm production, we can make wheat flour, which all these recipes I should note to you, all of these recipes are standard, except for the ones I'm gonna point out as not being standard. And what I mean by that is what you're gonna have happen over here is all gonna be very standard. If you don't know how production chains work, I recommend knowing that a little bit before this video, just cause it helps a lot out a little bit. Uh, but basically you have down here, you can activate or deactivate the production, which turns it on or off. This shows if it's inactive, needs more materials or is running. How many cycles per month is how many times this recipe is gonna happen per month, uh, which changes depending on how many days to months you have set and everything like that. So if you have it set to three day months, then that will happen 2,400 times in three days. If you have it set to one day months, 2,400 times every day. And then cost per month, that's the cost per month. And over here has all of our incoming materials and then all of our outgoing products over here. Now outgoing products, if you haven't set to storing, they're gonna spawn pallets in as needed. If I change it to selling, it's gonna automatically sell them though you are gonna take a 35 to 40% cut. Then if I go to distributing, it's gonna move them further to a different factory if a different factory needs them, which is nice. So anyhow, we have wheat flour, barley flour, oat flour, sorghum flour, a new recipe here, corn flour. So we'll talk about that one at the very end as well. Bread, cake, Sugar beets from sugar beets, or excuse me, sugar from sugar beets, raisins, grape juice, sunflower oil, canola oil, olive oil, cereal, butter, cheese, uh, fabric from wool, fabric from cotton, and clothing. So you can make a lot of stuff. So basically, if you wanted to put wool in here, you could have your fabric here, um, down here as distributing, and it should distribute it back into this factory. This is the only factory you have that takes it. And then you could do that to make clothing out of it. So you can have it set however you want. Um, so a lot of good stuff in here. The only new recipe in here is going to be corn flour. And let me look over at my sheet to make sure that's the only, yeah, that's the only one. The next one though has a lot of new kind of recipes. So this facility right here, if we go into the production menu here, take a look at it. Again, everything's going to work the same in terms of a production facility. Um, grass from hay. So that's very standard. That's, these are not recipes that are necessarily in base game productions, but that's how you would normally, that's the ratio normally you would get. So uh, make it do 240,000 liters of grass to hay every month, which is nice. Um, TMR, I'm not gonna look at these because I'm not sure the exact ratio and you can do different ratios of TMR um, depending on what you wanna do. So obviously you have one here with hay, silage, and straw. And then you have one here with just hay and silage. And then you also have one here with hay, silage, straw, and then mineral feed if you wanted to throw that in there as well. Um, so I'm not gonna look at those in terms of production or excuse me, in terms of uh, profitability or anything like that. But these ones I'm gonna look at, making lime, is it worth it? Or excuse me, making mineral feed from lime and soybeans, is it worth doing this? I'm also gonna look at the one where you can take stones and soybeans to make mineral feed. Um, then silage, that's standard there. Hay silage, this is new. You can't take hay and make it into silage, but now you can. Chaff silage, that's standard. Straw silage, this is new and extremely profitable. I'm not gonna look at this one either because this is, uh, honestly, this is a very, uh, very powerful uh, production here. If you can take your straw, which is essentially garbage in game in terms of its value and use, I mean, you can use it for obviously TMR and stuff like that. Um, and you can make it into silage, which is one of the most valuable substances in game in terms of you can make a lot of it really quickly and make a lot of money doing it. That's pretty good. Um, silage, and then if you wanted to put water in there, you could also get digestate out, which is really helpful for some of the recipes down here, which I'll take a look at with you. And then you also can um, do that for your chaff. So if you just add water in, you can also get digestate out, which can be really nice or use as fertilizer if you want. Now, these three ones I am going to take a look at. I'm uh, doing seeds from wheat, a thousand, a thousand, so one to one, barley and corn, all same recipe, just thousand to one or one to one, excuse me, thousand, thousand. And then lastly, we'll take a look at uh, lime, or actually not lastly, sorry, we'll have lime here, which is a hundred stones, a hundred water. So you're taking basically stones, you're getting off your fields and making lime. Um, then using that digestate to make liquid fertilizer, which you could have made from up here, gotten your digestate. And then using your digestate also from up there and some lime to make solid fertilizer. And then we have three pig food recipes. So we have the corn pig food recipe, which requires 450 liters of corn, 250 liters of barley, 200 liters of canola, and hundred liters of sugar beets to make a thousand liters of pig food. Uh, the sorghum one is 450 sorghum, 250 bar, or excuse me, wheat, 
uh, 200 canola and 100 potatoes for 1,000 pig food. This one is 500 potatoes, 200 sorghum, 200 barley, and 100 soybeans. And then again, those are just the duplicates down here of our other factories. So um, now what I want to do for you guys is pull a chart up on your screen. So you're seeing it um, right now. Actually, the first thing you're going to see is a list. So the list you see on your screen, these are the prices I use for the inputs and the outputs. Um, these are based on either the Steam price sheet uh, um, or the best sell price in the store over a 12-month period. So um, again, I'm trying to use, or it's the store sell price if you're buying it by pallet, like for limes and mineral feed and stuff like that, how much it costs you to get it at the store. I can't guarantee that the prices are completely accurate. They're just what I'm working off of so you guys can see. So if you guys are curious what I'm using for my inputs, this is just so you guys can screenshot this or take a look at this if you're curious. The next thing I'm going to show you is this chart right here, which is now on your screen. This is Farm Productions. Again, I'm using the Steam price sheet for the pricing for as many prices as I can get from there, which is taken from the XML, and a link to that is down below in the description. Um, economic difficulty is set to normal, and I'm considering all the water as an input as free. I'm assuming you can find water on whatever map you're on um, and get it for free. So obviously, if you have to pay for water, you're going to have to include that as an extra cost. Just be aware of that. Um, the other thing I want to note as well, if you're curious about all the other productions to see the profitability for all those ones that are the base game recipes, which by the way, these things will produce, these factories will produce all those base game recipes at a slightly slower production rate than the main factories, which makes sense because these are smaller production buildings. So um, that all makes sense and that's just the way it is. So if you are curious about that, a card's going to pop up on your screen. That'll take you to take a look at the profitability of all the base game productions. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. So corn flour, um, you're not going to make a lot off of corn flour. So the inputs and outputs here, how am I calculating those? The input is essentially if you, instead of putting the input into this factory, you decided to sell it, how much would you get if you sold the product instead of putting it in here? And the output is how much you would get if you sold the output or you got the output instead of buying it from the store for some of the things like seeds and stuff like that. So it's just comparing it to see if it's better for you to actually use this factory or sell the goods and buy the goods you need separately. So Corn flour, you're going to make a little bit of money, not a ton, so it may not be worth your effort to do it. But again, if you have corn lying around and you need flour for a different recipe, this is an easy way to be able to make flour. So I have no gripes, by the way, for any of these. One of these even actually, technically speaking, loses you money, but I still have no gripes for how this works out. I still think the numbers should be stayed or stay the same. Um, obviously, if Omatana wants to update and change them, that's obviously up to her. And if she does, I'm all for it. But I, I have a really good justification for all these numbers the way they are. And the ones that are important are, are good. So... Um, now, if you're making lime, or excuse me, if you're making mineral feed from lime or stones, both of those, again, you're around $94, $93 um, in terms of profit. So it's definitely a much better option to make your mineral feed using those recipes. Then if you're making seeds, you can make seeds with wheat, barley, or corn. Those are all better options than actually buying them from the store, though the best way to make them is if you have barley, you're going to get the best, which makes sense because barley is the cheapest of those crops. So you're going to get the best outcome and the corn is going to be the worst outcome, but it's still going to be much better than buying it from the store. Then if you're making lime from stones, you're technically losing a little bit of money. But honestly, you don't make a lot of money from stones anyway. So I would personally, if I was going to use this on my farm, I would still use this to make lime because I actually need lime on my farm. And it saves me the effort of having to go buy lime and have to go sell the stones. So even though I'm not, I could technically, and I still have to wait. If I'm going to sell my stones, I still have to wait for a good price. I can't just go stole them or sell them willy nilly and hope for a good price. So honestly, this is still a great production option as well, because you're basically just taking your stones and turning them into lime. So it's almost like a flat break even process that just saves you time. So I actually really encourage you guys to use that, even though on paper, it doesn't necessarily look good, but I, it makes sense the way it works. And I like the way it works. Um, then if we make liquid fertilizer or solid fertilizer, both of those are going to be cheaper than buying it from the store. And all of the pig food options are better than buying it from the store. I can't confirm if they're better than putting them all in separately and stuff like that. I haven't taken a look at that. But I, like, what I can say is if you make pig food using the potato pig food recipe, I can pretty much guarantee you that it's going to be the best way you can do pig food. Because, I mean, look at that comparison there. $562 for those inputs and that's $900 per thousand liter to buy it from the store. But regardless of that, guys, there you guys go. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I try to do this on different production mods as they come out just to kind of take a look at them and see if they're actually worth it for you guys. But this is a really good mod, and Omatana always does really high-quality work. And these are really cool production buildings, honestly. So uh, well done, Omatana. I think it's fantastic. But there you guys go. If you guys enjoyed, please drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn your notification bells so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and for watching.